How's it going everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my new series where I break down my top 10 prospects at each position for the upcoming 2013 NFL Draft. And in this episode, we're going to be previewing the most important position in all of football, the quarterback position. And let's get started. Coming in at number 10, we have Nick Florence, the redshirt senior coming out of Baylor University. He's sitting at 6'1", 205 pounds in his senior season, the first season after taking over the range of Robert Griffin III. Threw for 4,309 yards, completing 62% of his passes, 33 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. He started out the season very slow, throwing a few multiple interception games, but in his last six games, he only threw two interceptions, and both of those came in the Kansas State game when they won by about 30 points, so they didn't turn out to be too costly. In fact, during the senior season at Baylor, he actually broke Robert Griffin III's school record for all-time passing yards in a single season, so that's pretty impressive. While he did put up the good stats at Baylor, he did play in pretty much a system offense. He's still very undersized, sitting at only 6'1". He doesn't necessarily have a strong arm. He's sometimes inconsistent against good competition. You saw that specifically early on in the season. He did get better as the season went on, but still he has average accuracy. He's best on short routes, so maybe he'd fit better in a West Coast system. But he is known to make bad decisions, so he does have to improve on his decision making and he is a raw talent, but we'll see how he does at the NFL level. Next, sitting at number 9, we have E.J. Emanuel out of Florida State, sitting at 6'4", 240 pounds. His senior season, he threw for 3,392 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. In his toughest game of the year against Florida, which is definitely by far the best defense he's played all year, he did make many mistakes, threw for three interceptions. He does have all the physical tools. He's a tremendous athlete, has a very strong arm. Excesses all the size you want in an NFL quarterback as he's sitting at 6'4", 240, which is probably the thickest quarterback in this draft. He is very mobile. He has the ability to escape the pocket, but he does make too many poor decisions, as you've seen in games like the, in the Florida game. He can't avoid the rush with his mobility, but he does struggle when he gets pressured, and that really does scare away some NFL scouts. Another thing that scares away NFL scouts is that he has the tendency to hold on the ball for a little bit too long while he's in the pocket, and that is not a good thing at the next level, so he needs to get that fixed. I think a few years under NFL head coaching, an NFL quarterback, that he will develop into a pretty good quarterback down the road, but he does need to get a few things fixed to excel at the next level. Sitting at number 8, I have Tyler Bray, who is in fact the only junior to declare early out of any quarterbacks in all of college football, which is basically unheard of. But like I said, he's the only junior in my top 10. From Tennessee, he's sitting at 6'5", 215. His, senior, his junior season, he threw for 3,612 yards, 34 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. I do believe he was helped out tremendously by throwing to amazing wide receivers in Cordell Patterson and Justin Hunter. He does have a questionable frame, which could kind of scare away NFL scouts regarding to his durability. He has a very strong arm. He throws with great velocity. His accuracy, though, tends to be very, very inconsistent. His He's best when he's throwing the intermediate routes, and that could have been helped out, like I said before, by the great route running of Justin Hunter and Cordell Patterson. He does throw a decent deep ball. But the biggest question surrounding him is his leadership qualities. I mean, he was suspended from the team for throwing beer bottles at cars. So, I mean, that's very immature. And that's not what NFL scouts and head coaches want to see at the next level. Uh, but like I said, he's best in timing routes. I think he'd do best in the West Coast system. He does have confidence in his arm comparable to Jay Cutler. And I believe he has the most raw ability out of any quarterback in this draft. And that might be probably strung out by him being the only junior in this in this quarterback draft class but we'll see I think if he can add a little bit more muscle to that frame he could end up being a pretty good quarterback in the NFL coming in at number seven we have Zach Dysart redshirt senior out of Miami of Ohio sitting at 6'4 228 he's actually a four-year starter in the program so that's always a plus with the NFL scouts in fact he actually broke Ben Roethlisberger's school passing record while playing under four or three different head coaches and five different position coaches, either quarterback coaches or offensive coordinators. He threw for 3,483 yards his senior season, 63 completion percentage, 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and he did all this with absolutely terrible receivers. So he could have been helped out a lot if he had better receivers, but, I mean, that can only 
give him the biggest chance out of all the quarterbacks to rocket up the scout boards through all the all-star events, combines, etc., etc. He's very accurate, probably one of the best quarterbacks throwing on the run out of this draft class. He has a great size at sitting at 6'4", 228 pounds. He's not too fast, but he knows when to run, and that's always great in a quarterback. You don't have to be the fastest guy on the field, but you have to know when it's best for you to take off or if it's best for you to throw the ball away, um, wait to try to find somebody downfield, etc. You know the drill. Uh, one negative, though, he did play in a shotgun offense, so we have to transition into an NFL-style offense depending on where he gets drafted. His ball doesn't have great velocity, but that's not always a necessary tool in the NFL. It just depends on what system he goes to, and I'm sure an NFL quarterback or NFL coach will coach him up, and I believe he'll end up being one of the most underrated quarterbacks out of this draft. Sitting at number six, I have Ryan Nassib, the redshirt senior coming out of Syracuse. Sitting at 6'2", 228 pounds, his senior season threw for 3,749 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, and I believe... I personally believe he is the most underrated quarterback in the country last season and definitely coming out of this draft class. He has a very strong arm. One negative, though, he's poor when he's pressured. He's very accurate throwing on the run. Throws the ball with great velocity. He's a gunslinger mentality type of quarterback. He can make just about any throw. And he, But the one negative coming out of that when a quarterback can make just about any throw on the field, he can tend to trust his arm just a little bit too much. He believes he can throw the ball in tight coverage, and that might not be the best option to do so. Might throw too many picks. That's what he did a little bit at Syracuse, so that's something he has to fix up in the NFL. I'm sure an NFL coach can fix that in a quarterback like him. He has a lot of raw talent. He's very competitive. He'll do whatever it takes to move the chains. And something else that you've kind of noticed if you watch him play, he'll do whatever it takes to not take a sack whether it be make a short little shovel pass to a running back sitting out in the flat, throw the ball away, etc. He does not take a sack, and that's always a positive in a quarterback. He might be a little undersized, but he plays bigger than he really is. So I think he has probably the most raw talent out of any, any quarterback in this draft, or tops. He's definitely up there. And I think a few years in the NFL under an NFL-type quarterback and a NFL head coach, he'll end up being a starter in the NFL. And I, sitting at number five, I have Landry Jones, a redshirt senior coming out of Oklahoma. He's 6'4", 220, his senior season through for 4,267 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. And as you can tell, sitting at 6'4", 220 pounds, he has the ideal size for an NFL quarterback. Uh, decent mobility, but he makes way too many questionable decisions. He is pretty much a four-year starter. He took over his freshman year whenever Sam Bradford went down with a shoulder injury. And he played very well his freshman year, definitely surprised some people. His sophomore year, he blew up. He kind of fell off his junior year, and with a smart decision, came back for his senior year because I don't think he would have been a top five, definitely not a top five quarterback coming out of that draft class. So he definitely improved his stock by coming back this senior year. He's very accurate most of the time, and I say that because he can be inconsistent. Like I said, he forces the ball too much, but can create turnovers, so he needs to learn not to trust his arm as much, but he does have good arm strength, and most of the time, he's accurate. He definitely needs to improve his pocket presence, because when he gets pressured, he he definitely tends to struggle a lot more when not pressured. When he rolls out, and he has designed routes that are already there without making reads, he's very accurate, so he needs to learn to go through his progressions a little bit more, learn, needs to learn defenses a little bit more. And I think he does have the best deep ball in the draft, but there's a lot more to being a quarterback than throwing a deep ball. So I think just like the other quarterbacks, I think he'll definitely improve a little bit by being under an NFL system, an NFL head coach, and an NFL starting quarterback. Coming in at number four, I have the big tall beast Mike Glennon, the redshirt senior coming out of North Carolina State University. He's sitting at 6'5", 232 pounds. Some websites have him listed at 6'6", so he's in between 6'5 and 6'6", but either way, you can tell he has the NFL size, but you also heard that he threw 17 interceptions, so he is very inconsistent, but I know I said Ryan Nassib is a raw talent, but I do believe Mike Glennon has the most raw talent out of any quarterback in this draft. That's why I have, I have him as high as number four with all the interceptions. He has raw talent, like I said. He's definitely the strongest arm in the draft. He lacks mobility, 
and that definitely gets him under pressure a lot more than other quarterbacks, and that's where the interceptions come from, because he, when, when he gets pressured, he folds in, and he makes throws that he shouldn't have and wouldn't have if he wasn't pressured, so definitely needs to improve his footwork, his mobility in the pocket, his, his ability to escape the pocket and create time to make fields down, make throws down the field. Has a great deep ball. Like I said, he's in, inconsistent. He's improved footwork, and he's a raw talent. And his raw talent alone and his arm strength alone has him up all the way at number four. And I believe with the NFL coach to help with his footwork, he will end up being actually a starter in the NFL. Coming in at number three, this might surprise a few people, but I have Matt Barkley at number three, the senior coming out of USC, the four-year starter. And this quarterback is definitely a prime example of somebody that hurt the draft stock by coming back their senior year. If he comes out last year, he's a top 20 pick more than likely. And if this draft class was last year and he came out last year, he definitely would have been the number one pick in the draft. And now we'll have him falling all the way to number three out of quarterbacks alone, which might get him pushed to the second second round. And th- he just made way too many mistakes this year. He threw 36 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. He's sitting at 6'2", 230 pounds. So he doesn't really have the ideal size. He's built, his frame's probably what you want an NFL quarterback, but he's not necessarily as tall as you want him to be. He has a decent arm. And like I said, if you base him on last year's performance, and you put him into this year's draft class, he's definitely number one, but he just hurt himself this year. Too many interceptions, poor, very poor throws all year. Definitely made you wonder what happened to him over the offseason. Did he even practice? And uh, he's definitely a leader. He definitely has leadership qualities. He's definitely what you want in a quarterback. He definitely needs to limit his turnovers. And his last five games of the year, he threw multiple interceptions, and that you you can't have that in a quarterback. You can't be throwing more than one interception in every single game. That's 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 that ain't gonna cut it. You won't be starting in the NFL if you make that many turnovers. And he's not a quarterback. I think that can go into the NFL and start right away. He needs a few years, a few years to to fix his mistakes, and uh, learn his progressions, read defense better. And under an NFL coach, he definitely can do that. He 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 has the talent, the NFL ready talent, but. You, you don't want an NFL-ready talent that makes too many turnovers, and that's what he is. He's just an NFL talent that throws a few too many interceptions. And I believe, like I said, if he can get behind a quarterback that can teach him a few things, he can limit his turnovers, work on a lot of things. He has the talent to be an NFL quarterback, but if he can, if he's willing to do it, it's all up to him. Coming in at number two, we have Tyler Wilson, the redshirt senior coming out of Arkansas. He is 6'2", 218 pounds, and his stats this year weren't as good. He threw 21 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, completed 62% of his passes, but he was just on a very bad team, coached by John L. Smith. Just a a bad team. His wide receivers didn't perform up to expectations. Bad offensive line play. And the year before, you all saw he put up insane numbers, and like I said, just on a bad team this year. Don't take the numbers for what they're worth. And you look at his size, and he might be a little small, but trust me, he plays a lot bigger than he really is. He is he is the toughest quarterback in this draft class that is not named Colin Klein. He's just a straight beast, one of the strongest arms in this draft class. He's very accurate, and like I said, some might look at his size, and maybe you're a little bit too small, but no, no, he's he's so tough. He got hit so many times, so many times he was absolutely blasted by linebackers blitzing. But no matter what, he stays in the pocket and makes a throw no matter if somebody's in his face. And he gets right back up and makes the same exact throw twice in a row. That's just what he is. He has mobility to get outside the pocket. Some might want to compare him to Ryan, to Ryan Mallett. But, I mean, man, why would you do that? He's about five inches shorter. And he's completely, not completely different. He has the same accuracy. Probably even better on the run than Ryan Mallett throwing downfield. But... He's way more mobile than Ryan Mallett was, and that, I think, will make him a better quarterback in the NFL compared to what Ryan Mallett's going to be, but that's for a different story. But like I said, very tough kid. He'll be able, to, I think, believe, to actually be an NFL starter, and I wouldn't be surprised if we go through this whole entire uh, process, NFL combines, senior bowl, etc., and he might possibly shoot up to number one. I was... I was considering him putting putting him number one on my draft class, but uh, Geno Smith, for just some reason, I have him at number one. And I guess I can go ahead and move into that. I have Geno Smith number one on my draft board, and that's probably expected. And 
not so much for me. I mean, I don't think he's going to be pick number one. I don't think he should be pick number one. I mean, yes, he's number one on my board, but he's not head and shoulders above anybody in this draft class. I mean, these quarterbacks are so close together, it's crazy. And like I said, most have mock drafts have him at number one, and I don't believe he's a number one talent. I really don't. He might have be a little bit better than the other quarterbacks, but he's not too far ahead. He's, he's really not. From what I've seen in him this year, he's not a number one pick, but still, from what I've seen, he's still probably the best quarterback in this draft. He has a very strong arm. He is a system quarterback, so he put up amazing numbers his whole career, but don't take that for what it's worth because, like I said, he played in Dana Holgerson's offense. Any quarterback is going to put up great numbers there. But as you all know, he started out as the for sure Heisman candidate early on, or Kurt Hurley Heisman favorite, and he hit the Texas Tech game, and all went downhill from there. From what I noticed this season, he is very, very inconsistent when the weather gets different. If it's very windy, snowing, if it's raining, he gets very, very inconsistent and very inaccurate. And, I mean, of course, any quarterback out there is going to be not perform as well in bad weather conditions, but he his performance is so much... It's so noticeable how much his performance drops when the weather changes or if it's windy or something. That was definitely noticeable in the Texas Tech game when it was very windy, and that's when he started to throw in his first few picks, and everything went downhill from there. But the biggest thing that he does, aside from having a strong arm, is he doesn't throw interceptions. He might not be the most accurate quarterback in the world sometimes. I mean, sometimes it, he, he's so, like I said, he's so inconsistent. One game... He'll throw for 90, complete 90% of his passes. Next game, he'll be uh, 18 of 36, not converting third down all game. And it's weird how he doesn't throw picks, but no matter if he, he has a bad game or not, he will not throw picks. No matter what, he'll find a way to incomplete a pass without throwing a pick, no matter what, all game. But he's, he's very, very well in the pocket. Definitely has the best pocket presence of any quarterback in this whole entire draft. If he can improve his accuracy... I believe he'll be a very good quarterback, but that's a big if he can improve his accuracy. He definitely limits his interceptions. Like I said, he's very mobile. He can escape the pocket if he needs to, but he doesn't really because he has a, such a great pocket presence. He's one of the best pocket presence I've seen in the last five or six years. He does have questions of to middle toughness because when he throws an interception or things don't go right, such as the Texas Tech game, he starts to fold in and just not does not bounce back too well from the adversity. And like I said, he put some amazing stats up at Aiden Hol- Holgerson's offense, so don't take that for what it's worth. He still has great ability no matter what I said. I probably said more negative things about him because I, I know a little bit more about him than Avery, the quarterback, so I was more critical of him. But regardless of anything I said, I still believe after looking through all the quarterbacks, analyzing them a little bit more than I already knew about him, he is definitely still the top choice in the draft. And We'll see further how it goes with all the combines and everything. But as of right now, he's still my number one. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'm going to be doing breakdowns of the top ten at each position for every position except probably kicker. I'm not going to do kicker. But please, I was committed to making this video. It's almost 1230 at night. i got to be at school. At, we'll have to wake up for school at 530 in the morning. So... Hope you appreciated my dedication. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please comment below with your top 10. And have a great day. And as always, roll tight, go socks, and go Titans to you. I'll see you later.